welcome. Welcome to the Plaid Craft Studio this afternoon. We are going to give you yet one more episode of our 2022 new product showcase. And we have had a full week. Thank you to those of you who have chimed in and enjoyed every single episode. We've saved kind of the best for last. This is all about Mod Podge today. And here in the studio with me is Emma Panuski. Welcome, Emma. Thanks, Chris. I'm glad to have Emma here with us today. Emma is a, a co-worker of mine and a member of the content studio. She's very talented, crafter, and she too loves Mod Podge. So Emma and I are gonna share with you some new products in the Mod Podge line, so thank you. If you are just now tuning in and joining us, please stay tuned. We've got so much information to share with you. I invite you to please comment. Let us know what you like about the Mod Podge line. Let us know from where you are tuning in and be sure and ask any questions that you might have regarding the products that we're gonna share with you today because one winner is going to win several new products from the Mod Podge line here from Plaid Crafts. So thank you for joining in. I'm Chris Williams and again, we have Emma Panuski joining us today. And the very first product that we're going to spotlight in our new product showcase today in the Mod Podge line is Mod Podge Weather Resistant. I have a bottle of it right here. Emma's going to tell us everything about this. This is a brand new product in the Mod Podge line. There's right now currently like 20 different formulas and you think, well, what else could they come up with? Well, we have a water resistant Mod Podge now that works as a glue and a sealer. And Emma's gonna share all the details with us. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and pass this over to Emma and she's gonna actually craft with us and better explain the Mod Podge water resistance. So Emma, you go ahead and take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. So everybody, welcome to our very final segment of our 2022 Plaid New Product Showcase. Like Chris said, my name is Emma Panuski. I'm a content creator here at Plaid, and I am very excited to share with you all three brand new formulas of Mod Podge that we uh, have launched this year. So if you are a Mod Podge lover, be sure to stay tuned. Be sure to ask all of your questions and comment which one is your favorite, which one you're excited about, maybe even which one you've already purchased for yourself. We would love to hear all of those in the comment section below. So make sure to comment because then you'll be entered to win the giveaway too. So and like everyone Chris, loves a giveaway, don't yes, they? <laughs> absolutely. Why wouldn't you? Um, so we are kicking it off today, this afternoon with our new Mod Podge water resistant. So we are very excited about this one. Just like the name says, it is water resistant. So it is perfect for all of your outdoor crafts. Like you can see to the right of me, we have some terracotta pots and some birdhouses and this sweet little gnome and a few little painted and Mod Podged rocks. So it is a really great glue and sealer similar to some other Mod Podge formulas. So it works really well to adhere things like napkins and paper and fabric and all of those things that you would want to use Mod Podge for, this will do just that. You can use it as a glue and as a sealer. And another great thing is that it's really perfect for all of your outdoor crafting needs because it's also UV resistant. So all of these projects that you see, they're super cute. You can place them in the outdoor elements and not have to worry about it because it is so water resistant. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to apply it to some of your crafts, some of your projects. So right here, I have this cute little decoupaged terracotta pot. All I did was I painted it white and then I went ahead and used the water resistant to adhere some pretty napkins on top. And I'm gonna show you guys how to apply it to seal our terracotta pot today. So one thing that you'll notice when you start using our Mod Podge water resistant is that it's a little bit runnier than the traditional Mod Podge formula. So don't be taken aback by that. That's normal, it is working just fine. So I'm gonna grab one of my Mod Podge brushes and just like traditional Mod Podge, all we're gonna do is brush it on. So it comes with that little squeeze tap squeeze cap tip. It comes with um, in a four ounce size and a little bit goes a long way. You can see I applied quite a bit to my plate here and um, 
that's way too much. That's going to cover like six or seven pots. We don't need that much. Well, maybe perhaps you plan on doing an assembly line, Emma. Yeah, <laughs> or a little <laughs> the, herb garden. Yes, the nice thing about the Mod Podge water-resistant formula that Emma's working with today is that it does dry clear by adding also that extra protective layer that, you know, normally, you, as Emma said, she's decoupaged with napkins. You don't think about using paper outdoors. This formula is going to not only seal the paper to the surface that you're applying it to, but it adds that extra added protection, another whole layer. Absolutely. And I don't know, have we touched on this yet? It's also really great for sealing the inside of your pots. So if you are running into problems where moisture is leaking from your terracotta pot and getting in places where you don't want it to, this is also really great to seal the inside of your pot to lock that moisture in so that it doesn't escape through that terracotta text or that terracotta material. And that's perfect because we all know we need to water our plants once they're planted inside the Absolutely. terracotta pot. Yeah, absolutely. So it goes on and once it's dry, it maintains that really beautiful glossy finish. Um, that is the um, sheen that you will end up with. It has a really beautiful glossy finish, uh, if you guys can see that with these pots that are totally dry next to me. Look how stunning that is. I mean, it really is so, so glossy and beautiful. So it's super simple to do, as you guys can just see. I just covered that pot in less than 30 seconds. Um, I would go ahead and once this coat is dry, maybe just to play it safe, I would wait for this to dry and then go ahead and give it another coat just to really lock in the, um, the full potential. Okay, so now that you all have seen just how easy it is to apply to some of your projects, I'm going to show you just how well it really does resist water. And before we do that, Emma, I think it's a good idea now, since you've already got the product in your brush, let's tell them all about how they can easily clean their tools when they're done applying the Mod Podge water resistant. Yeah, that's a great point, Chris. So like I just did, you can use a bristled brush like I used. You can use a foam brush applicator, whatever you feel comfortable using um, most, you know, brush Brushes and applicating tools will work great for this. And the greatest thing about our Mod Podge water resistant, it's that it's non-toxic. So all you have to do to clean your brush or your applicating tool is to just rinse it in water, warm soapy water like you would with a brush that's covered in traditional Mod Podge. And Gwendolyn is asking, what is the largest size that the Mod Podge water resistant is available in? That's a great question. So currently we have our four ounce size um, and that's what we have right now. But if you're interested in a bigger size, let us know. We're always love, we always love to share all of your comments and feedback with some of our um, creators of these wonderful Mod Podge products. So let us know. And Emma, another question sure. came through, and this is from Randall, and he noticed that this Mod Podge appeared to be a thinner consistency or a viscosity, and he wanted to know if this would work in an airbrush. That's a great question. You know, I don't know if we've ever tried it in an airbrush, but if you decide to try it, let us know. It is water-based, so it might be successful. Um, that might be something that we have to test ourselves in the content studio. That's a, that's a great question. I don't know. So let us know if you try it, and we would love to hear how it goes for you. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys just how well our um, Mod Podge formula resists water. So I have this spray bottle and it's just filled with normal tap water and I'm going to go ahead and spray my terracotta pot that's sealed with our water resistant. How does that look? Can you see it? So as you guys can see, I'm spraying it, spritzing it with that water and it's really just collecting and beating up on the surface. It's not absorbing into my terracotta pot at all. So um, this is a product that I know we here at Plaid are really, really excited about. It is just a really, really great product to protect all of your projects that you want to place in your outdoors. This is a really great product to use for all of your summer crafting. Um, I know that I know a lot of people that are crafting right now to fill their patio space and their backyard areas and to really give it a whole new life. So. This is a great product for all of those needs. Bringing the indoors outdoors now, this is the perfect time of year to do that. Think about 
Uh, garden markers, think about the pots like Demo, uh, Emma demonstrated today. Think about bird houses, decorating bird houses and hanging them up uh, in your patio spaces is really a fun thing for this time of year too. So many different ways Mod Podge water resistant can be used. Absolutely. And of course, we've shown how to use this and to apply this product with um, decoupaged projects, but it doesn't end there. You can just use this as a great sealer for some of your painted projects as well. It doesn't have to be a decoupaged project. So you could paint a really beautiful birdhouse and then this would be the perfect product to seal it with. So Chris, are you ready to move on to our next product? Do we have yes. any questions? Oh, no, we're, I was just checking. I have my iPad here. So if anyone is interested in asking more questions, be sure and type them in the chat. Let us know from where you are tuning in. Let us know anything that you want to know more about on the Mod Podge line. In particular, our three new products that we're sharing with you today. I'll keep checking my iPad and we'll pass the questions on to Emma or I'll be glad to try and answer them myself. But let me scoot on because our next new addition in the Mod Podge family is, you may already be familiar with Mod Podge Ultra. It uh, is a product that came out, gosh, maybe almost two years ago now, I'm thinking, Emma. And it was available in the gloss and the matte finishes. And that is, oops, excuse me, that is this shape packaging right here. Mod Podge Ultra is a pump spray. Yes, it's not a brush on. It is a pump spray Mod Podge. And to that family, to the Mod Podge Ultra, we've added a satin finish. So Emma's got some examples up on her table there of both the matte, the gloss, and the satin. And I'm going to let Emma go ahead and give you a little show and tell about that. Awesome. Okay, so Mod Podge Ultra is a really exciting new product that, like Chris said, we launched to the Mod Podge family about two or so years ago. And it is so exciting because for years, Mod Podge lovers have been asking us to come out with a uh, spray on formula and we did just that and of course some of the benefits to a spray on formula is that you don't have any brush strokes so um, you can spray your Mod Podge Ultra onto your projects as a glue and a sealer and you get absolutely no brush strokes it is totally self leveling um, another great benefit to our Mod Podge Ultra is that it is water resistant so it is uh, great for outdoor projects um, it has a really, really strong adhesive property to it. So we love to use Mod Podge Ultra to decoupage heavier 3D objects to um, different projects. You guys can see here to the left of me this beautiful mosaic tray we did with only Mod Podge Ultra. There was no um, type of industrial glues or hot glue or anything like that. All we did was arranged our mosaic tiles and pebbles and then we went ahead and we sprayed our Mod Podge Ultra into the tray and it is, I mean, so, so durable. We've had this tray since the beginning of Mod Podge Ultra and it has stayed strong and, in, and intact. So Mod Podge Ultra is super, super strong. Like we said, it's great for embedding. So you can embed um, glass pebbles and mosaic tiles. And Chris has a sample over there. We embedded some seashells. Um, we actually mixed our Mod Podge Ultra with some regular craft sand that you can find at your local craft store. We mixed that into a paste, applied it with a palette knife to a beach painting, and then we embedded those seashells into our sand They are paste. actual dimensional seashells. Yeah, I, and it is really, really strong in there. Um, another great thing that we love to do with Mod Podge Ultra, it is also a great stiffener. So we have made really cute um, little yarn wheels that we have stiffened, created into a wheel, and then created a really cute mobile with. So um, if you are interested in Mod Podge Ultra and this is the first time you're hearing about it, then we have lots of information to give you. So make sure to go to platonline.com slash new to find out about all of these products that we're talking about today, as well as catching up with the rest of our segments that we have um, gone live with throughout the beginning of the week until now. So there's lots of new products to catch up on. Um, 
So yeah, and we have lots of great resources for you to find out more about Mod Podge Ultra. But let's get to the exciting part. If you are have been a fan of Mod Podge Ultra and you are a lover of it like us, then you know that we've only had a matte and a gloss formula. So in 2022, we have listened to you all that are lovers of Mod Podge Ultra and we've created a beautiful satin finish. So I'm gonna show you guys a really great example of the different three finishes. So this is our Mod Podge Matte Ultra, of course. So it has that really nice matte finish. And then this is our Mod Podge Ultra Gloss. So you have that super high shine, glossy finish. Stunning. And then lastly, the new kid in town, our Mod Podge Ultra Satin. So somewhere in between for a really beautiful satin finish. And Emma, as you um, just finished talking about the different finishes here, a couple questions have come in. Great. Um, are you ready for them? Totally. <laughs> okay. This is a question from, um, let's see, Jennifer. And Jennifer wants to know, which Mod Podge formula would you recommend for sealing painted rocks? That's a great question. So honestly, uh, we have so many different wonderful Mod Podge formulas that are great for sealing rocks. So of course we have our traditional Mod Podge Outdoor, which is a brush on formula, which is great for um, sealing some of your projects to place outdoor. So it's UV resistant and also water resistant. So that's a great option. And then we also of course have our brand new water resistant Mod Podge, which is really, really tough in protecting your um, surfaces against all of those um, things that might be wet in the outdoors. So rain, um, you know, still water, stuff like that. So this is a really, really strong water resistant formula. And then of course, there's also our Mod Podge Ultra, which is also outdoor safe. So there's three great options That's for right. sealing your rocks to protect them um, for the elements. And another great question, and I know your answer already, but I'm gonna <laughs> let you share it with everyone. Uh, Gwendolyn would like to know, um, when you're working and creating wreaths with that deco mesh, type fabric, uh, could you use, use the Ultra on it to spray on to help stop the mesh from fraying? Yes, absolutely. This is a really, really great um, tool to use to stop fraying. So we also have a great product called Mod Podge Fabric, which we like to use to um, treat our fabric with and then let it dry so that when you cut appliques out of it or you just really cut it in general, it prevents the fabric from fraying. It really keeps it intact and seals it. And our Mod Podge Ultra is also a great way to do that. So I will say that when you apply your Mod Podge Ultra to a material like that, it does have a stiffening effect. So it definitely will make your um, wreath look very voluminous and full if that's what you're going for because it will stiffen that material a little bit. But yes, it will absolutely prevent it from fraying. That's a great question. And how do we suggest cleaning out the uh, Mod Podge Ultra, the pump? Yeah, top? that's a great question. So what um, a good tip that I'm gonna give you guys at home is that you just always wanna make sure that that cap is on top of that um, nozzle. That way that there, there's no airflow to um, harden the, uh, the product in the nozzle. So make sure you always keep that cap on your Mod Podge Ultra. Even if you're letting it sit for a while, you you know go to the restroom or something and it sits for a minute, just make sure to always place that cap back on. Great questions. And you know what I like to do, Emma, too, just as another little tip, after I'm done using the Mod Podge Ultra, I often will uh, put that plastic cap aside and actually twist off the pump and then pump it with some clear water just to make sure that the product is all the way through and clean in that nozzle tip and then put it all back together and put the cap on it. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great technique, Chris. Okay, so let us know if you have any more questions about Mod Podge Ultra. We are super, super excited that we are launching a brand new sheen to the Mod Podge Ultra family. So let us know if you have any questions throughout we, our live stream. We do have another one, okay. Emma. Uh, let's talk about the curing time of the two new Mod Podges that you shared already, uh, especially the water resistant. How long does it take to cure before you can actually put your piece outdoors? Right, so for both of these, I would give it um, just about a week to really reach its full curing capabilities before you go ahead and place your projects outside. That's a great question. 
Okay, Chris, so are we ready to move on to our third product? Um, one more question, okay. please. This one is from Lynn, and she says, what kind of Mod Podge can I use on a metal mailbox? Okay, gr another great question. <laughs> so, um, I feel like, you know, we're, we're releasing so many great Mod Podge formulas for, the, uh, for placing your projects outside. So, similarly to these rocks, I would recommend for sealing your mailbox. Mod Podge Ultra is a really great sealer for that, and also our Mod Podge Outdoor. Two really great products for sealing your uh, mailbox. So many of our, our folks that are watching us today are all commenting on how much they love Mod Podge. They're all sharing the different formulas that they enjoy. So many are saying that they had not yet tried the dishwasher safe and they can't wait to give that a shout out. <laughs> yeah, we love dishwasher safe here at Plaid. Uh, that's one of my favorites too. I'm so glad that you guys are sharing all of your favorite Mod Podge formulas. Um, Gosh, it would be hard for me to pick a favorite Mod Podge formula, Chris. That is so I love right. them With all. 20 of them, and well, of course, now the new additions, there's that many more. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I think everyone says, well, why do I need another formula of Mod Podge? Well, you know what? There's so many different techniques out there in crafting. There's so many different styles of crafting. There's so many different ways to craft, different surfaces to you, different ways to embellish things. We have taken the mystery out of all of that for each and every one of you, and we have the Mod Podge formula specifically formulated for each and every crafting need. Absolutely. So, um, are we ready to move on? I think so. Okay. Let's talk about, I think this one might be my favorite. <laughs> uh, well, let's talk about another new addition to our Mod Podge family, and that is Mod Podge Crackle and it comes available in an eight ounce uh, wide mouth bottle as well as a little sampler set here. This is perfect if you just wanna give it a try. This is available in a two ounce flip top lid and it comes with a one inch foam applicator as well. Mod Podge Crackle is absolutely wonderful. It's not so much a glue and sealer, but this gives you a very special technique and effect of creating like a very fine eggshell crackle. This can be used directly on top of any decoupaged item uh, or it could be used on a painted item too as well. So I'm gonna turn it over to Emma and she's gonna tell you a little bit more about Mod Podge Crackle. And again, remember all of our Mod Podges are water-based, they're all non-toxic and they're all made right here in the state of Georgia. Great. They're all available at Plat Online. And if you want to get more information, be sure and visit platonline.com forward slash new because all of our new products that we've been showcasing this week are all on that landing page. Awesome. Okay, so talking about our very last product of the day and our very last new product of the week, Mod Podge Crackle. So just like Chris said, this is a really unique formula that we are adding to the Mod Podge family. Um, it creates a really beautiful, fine eggshell type crackle to any type of project that you would want to add a beautiful, rustic, antique effect to. So um, I'll show you guys some beautiful crackle projects that we did with our Mod Podge Crackle so you guys can really see it. So this is a really cute little treasure chest that we went ahead and decoupaged with some napkins. And then we actually applied that Mod Podge Crackle so you guys can see that really beautiful, uh, holding it up a little closer for you, that really beautiful, subtle crackle texture. Okay, so I am going to show you guys how to use our Mod Podge Crackle. So I've created a little step out for us all today. So this is just a plank of wood that I already went ahead and Mod Podged a piece of scrapbook paper to. And of course, once that was dry, I sealed it again with Mod Podge. So this is just a traditional Mod Podge formula. I used Mod Podge gloss, but you can use Mod Podge satin, matte, or gloss to do this first step. So you want to apply your layer of Mod Podge down so that you can seal, or I'm sorry, adhere your uh, scrap of paper to your piece of wood. Once that's dry, apply a sealing layer of Mod Podge to that, and now we're ready to apply our crackle. So this is totally dry, and we are going to get started. So I have a little styrofoam plate here, 
and my bottle of Mod Podge Crackle. This is, I'm gonna be using the two ounce with my one inch foam brush. And so it's really important to remember that you definitely want to apply that sealing layer of original Mod Podge to your project and make sure that it's dry before you add your Mod Podge Crackle. So I'm going to dip my brush in my Mod Podge Crackle and then I'm going to apply a fairly generous coat of my Mod Podge Crackle. So of course you can see in our finished projects to either side of me, the Mod Podge Crackle is going to dry totally clear. So once you apply it, it is um, almost like has a, a blue tint to it but it dries totally clear. So what we wanna do is apply a really generous coat to our project. Not worrying about, you know, making it smooth or not having any brush strokes because once the crackle starts to happen, you won't even see any brush strokes or anything like that because all you'll see is that beautiful crackled appearance. And the one thing that's different from the Mod Podge Crackle versus other crackles that we have, as an example, the Folk Art Crackle Medium, is this works on top of what you've decoupaged or what you've painted. It's not really creating a background surface. And this will give you a very fine crackle. And a uh, kind of th fun thing to play around and try is that if you put a very thin layer of the Mod Podge Crackle, um, as Emma's doing now, if you put a very thin layer on, you're going to get lots and lots and lots of very tiny, what we call eggshell crackles, all over the whole surface. If you apply a very thick application, it will take a little bit longer to dry, but you're still going to get a very fine crack, but they're going to be further spaced apart. So you can kind of play around and achieve the crackle finish that you like. Absolutely, just like Chris said. So I applied a pretty thin coat to my sample here. So as you'll see, we'll get some really fine, dense crackle uh, appearance. But you can also notice once you pick up some crackle for yourself, that in these areas where the product kind of piled up, just how I was you know, brushing it onto my surface, those areas are gonna have a less dense crackle because there's more of the product, whereas these areas that have a thinner application of the product, they're gonna have those more dense um, crackle texture. Okay, so I have a little step out with a little bit of TV magic. So I went ahead and um, applied my crackle medium to that project that we all saw. And then once it's finished, you can see we have this beautiful crackle effect. I'll go a little bit slower so you guys can really see. All right, so you could totally leave it at that. We have this really beautiful antique looking crackle finish, but some uh, a great little technique that we like to do here at Plaid is we actually like to take it a step further sometimes and you can create a tint to um, apply into those cracks so that you get that really beautiful antique rustic looking finish. And I'll show you guys before we get into it. We have two great samples to show you two ways to apply um, a little tint inside your crackle. So uh, on the right of me here, we have a darker Mod Podged paper. And so we applied a, um, like a white wash into those cracks. And you can see just how beautiful that looks. And then to my left, we have this guy. And we used a lighter color paper so that when it cracked, we applied a um, darker tint, just a, uh, and I'll show you guys what kind of tint I like to use, but we applied a darker tint so that we get that really rustic antique look. So um, what we're gonna use for our next step is actually some, just some watered down acrylic paint. So I'm gonna be using some Folk Art Wicker White, but um, there's lots of different tints that you can apply to this next step. I just personally love using plain old acrylic paint and water, so that's what we're gonna do. Okay, I'll squeeze a little bit of my Folk Art Wicker White. Yeah, and Emma's choosing the Wicker White um, because it's going to give you more of a whitewash effect because her decoupaged papers are darker. Absolutely. If you went more with a brown to age it like normal when you think of antiquing, you tend to think of browns. If you did something with brown on top of that dark paper, it may not show up as much. 
So the, this is kind of a neat uh, way to, uh, or an example, to show you that you can antique the colors on whatever you want based on whatever colors you worked with underneath. Yeah, absolutely, just like Chris said. So since I used a darker color paper here, I used a lighter color wash. Since I used a, a lighter color paper here, I used a darker color wash. Otherwise, it wouldn't have shown up as well. So that's what we're gonna continue with with our step out here today. So I've already applied some wicker white um, folk art to my palette there. Where's my spray bottle of water? So I'm actually just gonna use this to water down some of that paint. And I'm just going to mix these two together till they're really well incorporated. Okay, so we want to water it down so that it gets to the consistency of like milk. Okay, so once we're there, all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to brush back and forth onto my crackled surface. All like around magic, there. now all the cracks are gonna really yeah. show and really reveal themselves. <laughs> Absolutely, and I'm just taking a clean paper towel, just dry paper towel, and I'm just going to kind of rub that off. So that we're left with I have a, gr a couple questions for you, Emma. Sure. Would you recommend using a blow dryer or a heat tool to help speed up the drying time of the crackle? You know what? I like to let things dry on their own. So if you have the ability to, then I would recommend that. But regarding whether using a heat tool versus a blow dryer, I have found in my personal experience that a heat tool will help speed up the crackle more so than a heavier airflow. And the great thing about the crackle too is that um, once you apply your first coat of your little tint that we just did, um, you end up with this really subtle uh, antiqued uh, kind of effect onto your project. But if you wanted to take it a step further, you could continue to apply some of that tint um, and let it dry a little bit and then wipe it off if you want those um, that antiquing effect to be a little bit more prominent in your project. But I'm pleased with how this turned out. Um, it looks really, really cool and really pretty. It almost kind of reminds me of like, a, um, of like a reptile skin texture too. And I think that's probably because of the dark navy and the green. It's very botanical, very fresh feeling, but um, it's just so cool. It's one of those products that you use and um, you're always so shocked and pleased with how it turns out in the end, um, even though you know it's pretty reliable. You get the same results every single time. I'm always shocked and uh, very pleased with how my project turns out. Another question for you, Emma, from Raquel, and she wants to know, will the Mod Podge crackle work on fabric? Um, that is a great question. Um, I would think that uh, maybe it wouldn't work the best on fabric because fabric is going to be, you know, bended and um, I would think that the crackle might not stay in place as well because of the um, delicate texture of it. Well, and remember too, Emma began by having a top coat of, she used Mod Podge gloss to seal her decoupage uh, um, board. So if you were using fabric, you would have to put a layer of Mod Podge, whether it be the matte, the gloss, or the satin first, allow that to completely dry, and then put the a crackle on top, and it does not dry flexible. Right. So it really, I would think, not work too well on fabric, unless your fabric was mounted on a canvas and um, you know was not meant as like a pillow form right. or something. Right, it wasn't intended to be bended and moved around, for sure. Right, right. Okay, do we have any more questions, Chris? Uh, let's see, no, I think that was about all of the questions that I saw. Um, to, oh, I'm sorry, here's one more, Emma. Okay. Let me read it to you. This is from Barry. Would you use water repellent, or the water resistant Mod Podge, instead of dishwasher safe Mod Podge for the underneath side of a glass cutting board? 
That is a great question. Um, I would still recommend our Mod Podge dishwasher safe just because um, it is great for projects that you want to place in your kitchen. It's great for projects that you want to, um, you know, be able to wash in your dishwasher. So I love that question. Um, I would still recommend using our Mod Podge dishwasher safe. And that, I think, is the balance of all the questions from our viewers today. I want to thank everyone who either uh, added a comment or asked a question because you are now eligible for the drawing. You might be the surprised winner who might be receiving a little care package of Mod Podge new products today. Uh, and Emma, I want to thank you for sharing all of your time and your talents with us today and your knowledge about the three new Mod Podge products as all part of our 2022 new product showcase here at Plaid. This is the last episode of all of our new products um, that we are share showcasing all this week. Remember, you can always go back and watch the replay of each and every single one. And also too, remember you can visit plaidonline.com forward slash new. That landing page will give you all of the information about all of the products that we shared with you throughout the whole week. Any other things you'd like to say, Emma? Um, I just want to thank everybody so much for tuning in with us. We always have a blast sharing all of this information with you. We hope that you guys at home are just as excited as we are about all of these incredible new products that we're launching in 2022. It has been so much fun being here this week and sharing it all with you. So thank you guys for tuning in this week. And as you get your new product and do some creations, be sure to always post them on social use the hashtag plaid crafts because each and every one of us here at plaid love to be inspired by what you create and we love being your cheerleaders so thank you for that as well and so i guess until next time thank you so much for tuning in to our new product showcase this week i'm chris williams and emma panuski we're signing out and wishing you all wonderful crafting moments <laughs> bye